On September 9, 2015, the U.S. Department of Agriculture declared 35 of South Carolina's 46 counties primary disaster areas due to severe drought and relentless heat. Less than a month later, some parts of South Carolina registered 27 inches of rain when in the early morning of October 4th, the skies opened up and dropped an estimated 11 trillion gallons of water across the Carolinas. The South Carolina Department of Agriculture announced days later that conservative early estimates put direct crop losses from the flooding at more than $300 million. When the accounting is done, the final number could top $1 billion in crop, equipment, and infrastructure losses. What follows is the story of the impact this once-in-a-generation flood is having on South Carolina farmers and the state's agricultural industry. At 2 o'clock Sunday morning, my wife woke up and she said, Harry, it's white capping in the backyard. And I said, what? Uh, so I looked at my digital rain gauge, which zeroes out at 12 o'clock. And I didn't know it at that time, but it was on its way to a grand total of 16 inches in one day. Bridges are out. Crossings are out. Wiped out all of the plants. And now we got a drought and a flood during the same year. And um, I, I hope that part's never repeated. It's just been a roller coaster ride trying to uh, figure out whether you're going to have a make or break year. And it's not looking very good right now. Produce, I think, got hit the hardest in this particular area. But um, I know the cotton guys also were hit very hard along with the peanuts. I can only just hope for the best right now. I don't know any other way to anticipate what the outcome's going to be left up to God from now on. We'll see what happens. Everyone was touched. Nobody um, that I know of was not touched in some way. Any farm around here will tell you no matter what the crop was, it, it, it can't be good for it. This has been a historic event and a historic flood. Being a declared a a disaster because of the flood, it almost seems unimaginable, um, but it happened. And here we are with damaged crops and not a whole lot of answers. It'll take some time to, to work through all this and um, I'm sure the banks are going to be willing to work with us and um, Clemson, of course, is out here working with us and we hope we can get all the help, you know, help possible. We know that God's going to take care of us. The good Lord is with us and He has blessed us and, and we know that whatever happens, He's the one that's got the ultimate best plan for us. It's really going to affect the farming economy uh, in the South, in South Carolina. There's, there's no doubt. The issue is just going to be the, the amount of rain we got in that short period of time and uh, what it's done to the infrastructure around here, the roads. And I think that is really going to be the long-term effect is bridges and roads, um, getting the farm, the crops to the farm and the crops to market. Also had uh, 90 acres of tobacco, which was probably our best tobacco left in the field when the rain came. Tobacco can't handle water, it can handle drought better than water. And after the, um, all the water, it, when the sun came out after um, the rain quit, it, it all started flopping pretty, pretty quickly and we probably lost over $200,000 in just a tobacco crop. Where do we go from here? Um, we don't. There is no good answer to that question.
uh, we experienced a catastrophic event that was unprecedented in our state and our, our country's history and there is no playbook for how we deal with this situation. We're searching for answers. We're, we're searching for answers from everybody from Clemson Extension to state and federal agencies, from our county leaders, from other growers that, that are parts of our community. And hopefully, by virtue of the dialogue that, that we have tonight, we're able to think about some of the creative ways out of this situation. Because make no mistake, we are going to have to get creative. There's just no conventional answer that we can turn to here. We're going to have to create rules and guidelines and standards for how we do business moving forward. And it starts with uh, input from folks like you, the ones that are directly uh, impacted. 2015 is going to be known as the, the year of three strikes to agriculture. We started out with uh, low commodity prices. Um, then we got hit with the drought. And then we got hit with the flood and then the continuing rains. Uh, and those three strikes really have, have uh, hit home uh, here in South Carolina uh, to the farmers across this great state of ours. The, the problem that we're going to be facing is those three strikes for some farm operations across our state occurred in the bottom of the ninth inning and we were down. Um, so it, it's going to be a trying time for us this year, uh, this coming year. Uh, in probably the next couple of years. This second rain just kind of kicked us down and, and it's hard to get up every day and, you know, and go back and fight it again. You know, we've worked years and years to, to buy a little farm or pay for that tractor or pay for that cotton picker and we lost it in just a few weeks. And that's a hard thing to do. Um, and that's what most of them, that's why, you know, they, they, they really need help and, and I need help. This process is delayed for too long, or if adequate assistance is not received, the next time we call a farmer meeting, we're not going to need to build on this size. And that's just the facts. There are some good farmers in this room, farmers I've known all my life. I'm reminded of something a wise man said about 100 years ago <clears throat> when he was running for public office, and it went something like this. You can destroy the cities across our land and they will rebuild. But if the family farm fails, you will have weeds overtaking the city streets all across America. So, as you develop your solutions, we challenge you to do so with the same compassion you see in this crowd tonight. With the same compassion that's willing to work six and a half days a week from sunrise to dark to provide those very essentials required to sustain life. Our food, our fiber, our shelter, and yes, our freedom. Still up in the air where the answer is gonna come from, but our state definitely needs to have some answers, needs to find some answers for the farm because it's, it's gonna be the trickle down effect, the economic impact of losing 400 plus million from our state is is going to be quite significant for um, agriculture has, has held up our communities um, around the state for many years and losing it is not an option. A farmer is a survivor. The farmer is going to survive this year. Um, you, you'll see a few of them go out this year but uh, but they're going to survive because the farmers had is they know how to survive without with a little bit of income coming in. Um, if things don't change, the 16 going into 17 will be the impact year that we see. Because um, the banks and the, and, it, and the loaning institutions are going to work with the growers this year. But if it don't turn around, it's, it's nothing going to be, but we're going to prolong it with one more year if we don't get some some help from the federal government as far as a grant, not another loan. This is beyond any, anything that I've seen. I was here in Hurricane Hugo, uh, which is our, our closest big nasty event that we've had, and it was bad, uh, but this pretty much takes the cake from the standpoint of the magnitude of losses. Now in Hurricane Hugo, we weren't growing peanuts at that time. So we dealt with the cotton, and the cotton sprouted, and we got by it, and it was, you know, we came out of it 
not happy, but we came out of it. This situation is going to be a lot different because we have a, a huge expense tied up and we're going to have a minimal return on it, which puts us in a very difficult situation come planning time next year. This extension has been played a central role in getting the farmers word, their story heard throughout the state and our nation. You know, we don't really know where we're going to go from here. We're um, trying to find some solutions, some practical solutions to, to get this farm, get our farm back um, into, the, into the black. It's, um, you start talking about a half million dollar loss, that's not something easy to overcome. I would think that the real answer is real reason that we're here is hope. The sun returned once again and the fields are starting drying out and once again there is hope. I think hope is at our core as a farmer, as a farm community, farm family. And we're here recognizing that we have damage on our farms and we have damage in our communities and we're hoping that there are solutions to the problems that we're facing. Our communities can't handle that much loss. Our state can't handle that much loss. Agriculture is the number one industry of South Carolina. And right now we're treading water, waiting on the lifeline. From a farm perspective, I don't see any silver bullet. But we all know that help is needed. I think Governor Haley said it best when she told me South Carolina cannot afford for the farmer to fail. May God bless the farmer and God bless South Carolina.